What made you want to pursue this career? Well, um, I kind of fell into it actually. Um, my company went out of business and my sister worked at a law firm and she was pregnant and um, called me and asked me if I would cover her maternity leave. So I was extremely nervous and I said, sure, <laughs> why not? It was something new. I really didn't know. I was young. I didn't know what I wanted to do yet. So. Um, I did. I covered her maternity leave and that was my first job um, in the field of law and um, it worked out well. I didn't even know how to use a dictaphone when I first started there. So um, I, it was on the job training and, I, and then I really liked it. So pretty much how I started. <laughs> and how many years have you been doing this for? 22 years. Oh wow. <clears throat> yes. Um, after covering her maternity leave um, I went to a firm, a medium-sized firm, I guess, in Gloucester County. Uh, they needed a receptionist. So I was 19 years old. I went in, took the job, and I learned everything I could. I was there for eight years. I pretty much did every form of law you can possibly imagine. I learned whatever I could while I was there. I left there, went to a very small firm who did PI work and in, uh, insurance defense. He hired me as a paralegal, and he wanted me to go through medical records, um, prepare a file for trial, deposition notices, things like that. So I did that. Then I went to another firm who was also a small firm, and he brought me in to bring his firm up to date. His firm was a little bit behind the times, and uh, he did bankruptcy work, which is where I got into the field where I am now. Um, I did that. He also dabbled in social security disability, so I learned a little bit of that also, but mainly it was bankruptcy, and that was debtor end work, whereas now I do creditor end. So I left there and went to a firm who um, I did some corporate litigation, some business law, I did some creditor work there, also in bankruptcy. I did, well, she pretty much did everything, and um, <clears throat> pardon me. From there, they, they unfortunately went out of business. So from there, um, after having my daughter, I came here. <laughs> and I've been here ever since. And here I do creditor's rights work. Um, that basically consists of bankruptcy and foreclosure. I am more in the bankruptcy end, but I'm getting now more involved in the foreclosure end because bankruptcy has kind of slowed up and foreclosure is picking up. So, um, it, it's kind of which came first, the chicken or the egg. Bankruptcy, we can get a bankruptcy referral, we go through, we do what we need to do in the bankruptcy, we get what's called relief from the automatic stay, which is how the debtor is protected from any creditors coming after them. Um, once we get relief from the stay, we can then proceed with foreclosure. Or, they're in foreclosure, and because of the foreclosure, or many other reasons, they have filed bankruptcy. If that's the case, we again then need to get relief from the stay. If it's, you know, if it's the case, we need to get relief from the stay and move forward with the foreclosure. So that's what I do here. <laughs> okay, would you recommend going to school to learn some of these paralegal skills? I would recommend going to school. Although I was not formally trained, um, I would recommend going to school. I think education is your biggest, you really need, even if it's not, formal schooling. Whatever the firm offers here, I take everything, every opportunity I can to learn. Whether it's seminars, whether it's training classes, no matter what it is, I say yes. Because as far as I'm concerned, the more you know, the better off you'll be. Of course. And what would you say is your favorite <laughs> part of your job? <laughs> favorite part of my job? I like to figure things out. Always have. Um, I like to get into a file from the very beginning. So as soon as we get the referral, I like to find out exactly what we're doing, who it is. Um, sometimes we need to find people. I like to try to do that. We use Westlaw. We use different forms of um, internet searches to find people. Um, that's my biggest thing I really like to do. Um, one of the, You may have people who have passed away, and unfortunately that may be why they haven't paid their mortgage. So. Um, if that's the case, we then need to find out um, who their 
executor or executrix of their estate is, if they have any heirs, those people need to be named as defendants in the foreclosure action. Sometimes there are um, mortgages that we didn't know existed. We think we're the first mortgage, and there's actually another mortgage out there that exists prior to our mortgage. Sometimes the, those mortgages were paid, but unfortunately, they were never discharged. So we have to track down um, the entity who held the mortgage, and sometimes that entity is no longer around. They've assigned that mortgage, and they've assigned that mortgage, and they've assigned that mortgage. So we need to find out who holds the mortgage now, currently, and then we have to ask them if the mortgage has, in fact, been discharged, and if so, if they would do a discharge of records. So I, I like to do all that stuff, to figure things out and find out what's going on and discover things and make sure the client has properly notified um, the debtors um, before proceeding with foreclosure because they, they have to do things in a perfect manner before we can proceed. So it's always good to review their stuff. <laughs> okay, and what's the most difficult part of your job? The most difficult part, I would say, would be working for many different attorneys. One, you have different attorneys want different things. That being said, I primarily do bankruptcy. Um, bankruptcy work tends to be quick because especially if it's a chapter seven, which means they're wiping out all of their debt um, and they're gonna be in and out. Usually it stems about four to five months from the time they file to the time they get a discharge. So if we're gonna act, we have to act quickly. A chapter 13 is a, where they pay portions back. They pay um, pennies on the dollar back to their creditors. Sometimes they pay unsecured creditors back Sometimes they don't. It depends on how their plan works and how much money they make versus, you know, their secured debts, unsecured debts. Their, um, it, it's a long process, which we won't get into. But um, we sometimes need to object to a confirmation of plan. So we have to do these things really quickly when a bankruptcy is filed because we can't miss our deadlines. So sometimes the foreclosure work that I have has to take a back seat while I work on, on the bankruptcy stuff, which sometimes drafting a motion can take a half a, a half a day, which, you know, tends to put everybody else's work behind. So I think an open line of communication um, with the people that you work, whom the people you work, um, is great to have because um, as long as you let them know what you're doing and what's going on, they tend to like that better. At least they know that their work is as important as the other attorney's work that you're doing. So you try to have to you have to try to make a very good balance of your work, and and then that's how you have to go because it works out in the end. But <laughs> eventually. Okay. So what are some skills you would say is important for a paralegal to possess? Oh well, I'm gonna go to my notes here. <laughs> I would say some of the most important skills. Definitely confidence. You have to have confidence. You actually, you really have to have a good re working relationship with those of whom you work because if you don't, it'll never work. Um, you have to have good telephone skills, computer skills. You have to be professional. That is definitely a must. Um, you have to have a good rapport with the clients. The clients or contacts at court. Um, I would say the more that you call them, the nicer that you are, the more that you say to them, hi, how are you, how was your weekend, da, 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 things like that, the more you're gonna find people are gonna give you more. So the more you give and the, the nicer you are to people, the more gonna, they're gonna give you in return. I've had several people say to me, I called that court clerk and she wouldn't give me anything. How did you get it? And I say, I killed her with kindness. That's definitely a, a trait that I have that I think that most people should have when you go into this type of business. Okay, and uh, finally, what advice would you give to somebody who was trying to enter the field? I would sort of repeat what I just said to you, um, but I would also say that offer to help wherever you can. Um, no job is too menial for anybody. So even if you're a paralegal and you have secretaries that have a different type of job that you do, um, I think that picking up a phone when we're short-staffed is not above anybody so I think to offer to help whenever you can is what you need to do um, I would say definitely have a good attitude about everything you do love what you do have passion for your job um, if you have passion for your job it will reflect in your finished product it will and the, the attorneys love 
when you put a good effort into things. If you, you want to make their job easier. So if you go through and do everything you possibly can to hand it to them so they have to do the least amount as possible, you've done your job right. So that's what I would say. Just make sure you get in there with a good attitude. Learn everything you can. Every time you're offered an opportunity, take it. Take whatever you can learn. It's, that's the only way you'll get through this. And you'll have many opportunities because of it. I